Okay. Let's dance! Boss fights are often some of the most memorable moments of a game due to their spectacle or their narrative importance, but in terms of game design, what makes a good boss fight? Well, bosses are typically tests of player skill, but the skills a player acquires differ from genre to genre. Some types of games are more aptly suited for the stereotypical boss fights than others, with action games perhaps being the best fit for these one-on-one -on -one encounters. Devil May Cry holds a pretty focused combat system in the sense that it's typically concentrated on messing around with just a few or maybe one opponent. Individual moves and abilities are primarily used to precisely influence the positions of player and enemy, in contrast to the more free-flowing attacks of something like Bayonetta. Because of this, small humanoid-like enemies tend to be where Devil May Cry shines, and for me at least, Kratos is one of the best. It's the wish of his holiness. Kratos tends to attack in short, rapid bursts. Some attack chains may last longer than others, but he wastes no time in getting to the point, especially on turbo mode. If you're gonna be fast though, you have to be fair about it. To this end, Kratos moves have this lovely elasticity to them, like a rubber band being stretched and then let loose. This very clearly telegraphs all of his moves. The exaggeration on his animations, along with the often added glow to his sword, indicate pretty obviously that an attack is incoming. This back and forth telegraphing isn't just exaggerated, but there are defined points on his swings as well, such as here, to here, to here, and so on. These clear points help construct a sort of rhythm to his movements. You don't have to memorize the timings of attacks because their rhythms become so ingrained that dodging happens on instinct. One little piece of telegraphing I really like is on his signature projectile chain attack. The first in the chain is signaled with a very clear bounce, then the second happens while or just after you've dodged the first, so you have to keep your eyes on two places at once, but it's similarly, if not more obvious, to compensate. And finally, having got used to to dodging more than one of these, the last has much more subtle telegraphing to test the player's core reflexes better. The boss is also programmed to end the attack chain if you get hit by any of these. You're not overly punished for just failing to dodge one. Unskilled players are properly penalised, but things only get a bit trickier for those who can handle it. Speaking of which, this boss is great at inviting you to be cheeky. For instance, you can mess around in the ways you deal with these spears, choosing to hit them at just the right time for some health, risk a sidestep for some style meter, or going for the buster move which rewards some well-timed players with an awesome counter. The pauses in most of his other attacks are just long enough to get in a dodge. Take, for example, this uppercut followed by a strike. The normal dodge roll takes around 37 frames to complete, while the gap between these two slashes is about 35. There's very little room to breathe in these attack chains, keeping players on their toes and further encouraging the precisely timed sidestep move not only to increase the lad points meter, but to allow players an extra few recuperation frames. When players feel really in their zone, the fight should turn into a game of speedily zipping in and out of Kratos' attempts to make Nero a Swiss cheese before unleashing a flurry of motorbike-powered sword slices. And people say Nero wasn't a cool character. It's this constant tug of war, the exchanging of attack chains that keeps this fight so exciting. Things can also turn on their head quite quickly. Kratos' shield allows him to block your attacks after a few hits and this mechanic is handled really well. Usually the first time he just stands still with his shield poised, so players are punished if they somehow don't make note of this and hit the shield again, prompting him to launch an attack. I say usually because sometimes he's not so nice and goes straight for the attack and sometimes he's weirdly forgiving, but either way the telegraphing again is so good that it barely matters. Just watch how Kratos practically snaps from his standing shield animation to his prep for the slash. This along with the distinct sound effect and Nero's stumbling animation make it clear that you messed up and should prepare for the worst. Similarly, there's the parry, where you can make your enemy stumble if you lock swords at the right time, adding an extra little bit of strategy to those with adept timing. This constant tussle would get a little draining though, so thankfully there are often times after an attack, if you're far away enough, where Kratos will do little more than stroll forward for a kind of western standoff. The skirmishes themselves are fast and frantic, but there are coffee breaks in between so you can regain your senses. Even then, as the fight goes on, things begin to change. On Dante Must Die difficulty, just over halfway through his health bar, Kratos' shield will give out for a while, allowing you to hand his ass to him without him blocking your every move. But this is just a moment of catharsis before shit hits the fan. At this point he gains a load more long distance moves, which cut the downtime between all those rests you had before. I'm super fond of the stinger, but the floaty spears can just go. The ones that circle you are just tedious to get rid of, and the ones Kratos throw at you are borderline impossible to predict. They always have the same timing, but the telegraphing on them is really not clear 
clear at all. One of the few poorly telegraphed attacks in the fight. But the important part is once you get past this threshold, the downtime between his attacks reduces significantly. He'll often chain different movesets together with a stinger or an aerial slash in between. On higher difficulties, you'll really feel your palms sweating as you try and weave in and out of this goober's attacks. On Devil Hunter, the default hard mode, this threshold is later in the fight, around this point. You still get this frantic increase in difficulty to make things more exciting, but it's more like a mad push right before the finish instead of the whole second half of the fight, which would be a bit much for this difficulty level. Couple this boost in intensity with how Kratos' strolling animations get increasingly fed up, the over-the-top reactions to your hits, or certain moves are leaving marks in the ground, and you've got a fight that just feels great to play. Kredo is a bit of an outlier, not all of the bosses in DMC4 are this cool, but to beat a dead horse, the more evident comparison comes with the bosses of DMC Devil May Cry. I think you're all mixed up. There's little to no back and forth here, you wail on an enemy until a big dumb obvious attack comes your way, pacing isn't natural, instead has to be forced with cutscenes scattered throughout, and worst of all, their big dumb nature doesn't play to the strengths of this kind of combat system. Actually circumventing your enemy, being able to jump over their heads, launch them into a combo, that's kind of the secret ingredient to this system. But these fights function more like Zelda boss fights, it's filling a prerequisite before mashing the attack button, and that's not the appeal of DMC, reboot or otherwise. The way this fight plays to the strengths of the game's combat system means that most advanced techniques for top dog players apply here too. Hell, Dante's not even designed for this fight and it's still fun to play with him. The mechanics are so versatile and gel together so well it doesn't even matter who you're playing as. I won't have even come close to fully analysing the fight from Nero's perspective. Kratos a really tightly designed, well paced, brilliantly telegraphed and just exciting fight to play. Whether you're inexperienced and struggling with his rapid movements, or some legend just messing around with the guy. If this series is going to move forward eventually, in any capacity, Capcom shouldn't be looking for how epic, over the top or edgy they can make these encounters, they should be looking to fights like these, a simple punch up on a bland arena that manages to be way more thrilling.